Good morning, church. Good morning, our online church. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. So excited to be here. I know that God has a word for you this morning, and I want to give it up for Kevin and Kevin and uh, Amaryllis, Pastor Rowe, been doing an awesome, awesome, awesome job. Let's give it up for them. Uh, can we get the... Uh, Jesus, now we're on. Okay, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. So are you ready for what God has for you today? I, I believe that every time that we come together in one mind, in one language, there's repentance. And repentance, all it is, is a change of mind. Sometimes we believe the wrong things and we get the wrong results. So let's change that. And I believe God's truth could do that for us. And so we're going to continue our series, We're Better Together. Okay, we are better together. There's something about coming together in one mind, in one language, coming together as a body, coming here. I know that now with the whole COVID thing, it's kind of crazy, but uh, we do what we can to gather and, and come together and hear the Word of God because we know that something happens uh, when you're together with someone. Something happens when you're going through someone, something and somebody's there for you. Isn't it better because a lot of times we just find ourselves by ourselves and think the whole world is against us. But there is people that are for us. And so we're going to be praying about those people that are for you. There's more that are for you than are against you. And understanding this is what gives you boldness. I remember growing up and there was like little small gangs, right? And then for some reason when I was with my boys, I was bold. You, 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 you know, when you were with your crew, you kind of like, what up? What? But if you by yourself, you're like, <laughs> I <ain't> say <saying> nothing. <laughs> and so imagine that, right, in our hearts, in our, in our spirits, when we know that we're one with God and that there's an army behind us. There's something that shifts on how we see life. Because at the end of the day, every day we're making choices. And if we're making choices based on fear, we're going to get the wrong results. But we make uh, choices based on the boldness and knowing that if God for us, come on somebody, if God for us, who against us. So we're going to go into the opening verse in John chapter 17, verse 21. And we're, this here is a prayer from Jesus. And I think that if Jesus is praying, that we need to listen to what he's praying because it's something that he wants. The Bible says that he will always say, if you see me, you see the Father. We are what? One. Becoming one takes two. In God's math, it doesn't make any sense. But here, uh, let's see what he is about to share with us this morning and see what God wants to speak to us because I believe that God always has a word in season to, to, to guide us in this time. And it says, I am, this is Jesus, I am praying. Jesus, the man, is praying and he is saying it loudly. He, matter of fact, it's so important that it is written down and we're talking and listening to his prayer. I am praying not for only these disciples, but also for all who will what? Enter, ever believe in me through their message. So Jesus in this verse was praying for us. Because when he said it, we wasn't even around. And so this is a prayer that goes from year to year to century to now. Because we, we are now still listening and believing his message. And he's praying for us. I pray that day, all of us. All be one. All be one. Just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us. So here's a connection. is one with the Father, one with Jesus, with a oneness that's coming together in this prayer. And um, that I'm in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe, so that the world will believe, so that the world will believe you sent me, so that the world will believe. I have given them the glory. Woo! Tell your neighbor, you got the glory. And you're like, what, what is that? Just, <laughs> I'm going to explain what glory is. <laughs> so if it's your first or second time, sit back. I'm going to share it, and you're gonna, we're going to understand what glory is. Glory, all it is, is the power of God in you. 
In other words, we all are empowered by God to do whatever God has called us to do. But there's something special that happens when we come together as a body. There's something that happens when we come together in oneness because he's saying, hey, when you guys come together, there's something that happens. His glory is seen. So that they may be one as we are one. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. You've given us this moment in time to come together and open our ears and open our hearts to hear what you have to say, Lord. In this moment, change whatever lies the enemy has put in our hearts and take it out and put your truth. Redirect us, re-guide us, repurpose us. Do it all again. And this is what we're here today, this morning to do, Father, in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, amen, amen, amen. amen. So here he's saying a prayer of, of power. He's saying a prayer of something that he wants. He's saying a prayer that he's talking about how he wants his disciples to be one. Now, there is a oneness that happens when we are a household. When you're a husband of the house, you're the oneness is in your family. But there is also a wholeness that comes together when we come together as the body of Christ. And so Jesus is saying this in John. And John is one of the disciples that walk with Jesus. And he's writing this down and he's putting this prayer so that we can hear it today. But before I go into the meaning and the deepness of this, how many here watch Grey's Anatomy? Come on. I know some men like this. That's a girly thing, huh? but I do it, Pastor. <laughs> and so my wife got me hooked on it. Usually they're the ones that hook you up, right? So they're watching it and watching it, and all of a sudden you're like, ah, porqueria. Hey, what? What happened to Bailey? Where did Bailey go? You start learning who's who, and, you, and you're hooked. And we're so hooked, all me, that I watched this in my, my sixth six, six season. I mean, I, I know the thing inside out. Don't judge me. Do not judge me. <laughs> and so that I, I was just watching it the other day. And there was one episode that it was like a Halloween. And there was a gentleman that came to Bailey. Bailey is one of the doctors, the primary doctor. She's the chief of the whole situation. And he tells her, hey, listen, I need you to cut my foot off. So he's there, and his foot is going like this. And... She's like, why? She's like, well, he was like, it doesn't listen to me. So he's talking and the foot is going like that. He's like, but how will you want me to cut your foot off? So I was like, well, it's not listening. I'd rather cut my foot off so I can do what I got to do. But with my foot going all over the place, I don't get, I want to go somewhere, but I can't go because my foot is all over the place. She's like, no, no, we're not going to cut it off. There's a communication problem. In other words, your mind is sending the signal to your foot, but your foot is not listening. And so your foot wants to do what it wants to do, but your mind wants to take it somewhere. And the body wants to go one place, and the leg wants to go another. And so he goes, and he cuts the leg off. <laughs> they take him down. He says, man, you got to be crazy or insane. Because who cuts their leg off? And he says, no, insanity is this. You wanting to do something, and your leg taking you somewhere else. Woo! In other words, there's a, there's a mission, there's, a, there's something that you want to do, but the signal, the language, the vocabulary, the, the, the means of understanding, the means of coming together are not coming together because there's a communication problem. And so many times we want to do what we want to do, but our legs or our feet are not going the same way. And, and God talks about that the body of Christ has to be one body. He's coming together in one thing. And, the, and when he starts talking about this oneness, Jesus was in the beginning. He was the word. The word was with God and word is God. In the beginning, Genesis. Everybody say Genesis. Genesis means beginning. And Genesis was wrote, written by Moses. Everybody know Moses. Moses wrote this. But there is another signature there's another writing in the bible that talks about something that took place in the beginning and jesus since he was in the beginning he's the beginning and the end he saw all things so when he's praying this in john is because he knows there's a mystery of coming together there is a mystery when you come together in one mind and one language i remember a couple of years ago when we when we got together to do ignite revolution it was all young people so they didn't have no jobs so they were always hanging out with us but we were so in the vision we were so connected with what we wanted to do we it was so oneness like we just wanted to do is to bring glory to god that we started with 30 kids and we ended up with a thousand kids on a saturday so i know the power that is in this but let's go to see what the Bible talks about in Genesis 11.1. 1. 
interesting enough, Genesis 11.1, 1, that was this morning, I just stood it. 1 plus 1 equal 1, Genesis 11.1. 1. No, you didn't see it? Okay, it's there. <laughs> Here is the first verse. He says, at one time, at one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same Words. At one time, there was a moment where everybody was connected. At one time, there was a moment that we got together to do something and we did it. At one time, there was no beef. There was no miscommunication. At one time, the leg was with the, with the, with the body and the arms were with the body and the mind was taken. At one time. At one time. And so here, this is the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Confusion. And it's written here because it has some interesting things that I want to share with you. Because a lot of times we don't do better because we don't know better. And the, one, the minute you know better, you do better. That's why it's so awesome because we might think of seeing something one certain way, but God has a totally other way of looking at it. But you know what? When we do it God's way, it gives us fruit. When we do it our way, our tree is like this. <laughs> not, not even a leaf comes out. Because we're doing it not based on what God says. The, the Bible is an awesome book because it gives us instructions on how to do life. Have you ever tried to put something together without the instruction book? Have you ever got, I always say Ikea because I go there. If you don't do it with the book, it might look like it, but it won't last long. <laughs> it might, you, you might try to figure it out because you ever done something, you'd be like, this is simple, right? It, this makes sense. But then again, you got a bunch of parts to be like, maybe they send it extra. No, they didn't send them extra. It's you didn't figure where to put them at. And this is how we are with our life. There's a lot of pieces in our hands, and we don't know what to do with it. And it's not that it doesn't go. It goes somewhere. It's just we didn't read the, the manual. And so now we have a house. We have our lives are broken, are, are, are falling apart. Our kids are falling apart. Everything is falling apart because we try to assemble it based on what we think instead of what God says. And this is not something, I, I always love the, the fact that when you come to church, it's not something you do religious. It's something that I want to go in there to leave with something. You, you came here today to leave with something, something that's going to make it prosperous wherever you go and do. And the only thing that's going to change is the way you see things. Because the problems are going to be there, but now you know how to handle them with the word of truth. The body. So here he goes. At one time. At one time. I pray that at one time. The whole church will be together in one. Because the only one who hates togetherness and who hates people from coming together for one mind and one language for something for the kingdom of God is the devil. El, El Diablo, however you want to call him. El Satan. <laughs> that guy. But here in Genesis 11, 1, before we read this, I'm going to tell you what's going on. I'm, 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 I'm going to say it. I didn't want to read it because it's kind of long. But all the people were coming together, right? And they was like, hey, I got an idea. And my idea is let's build a tower that goes all the way to heaven so that the whole world may know who we are and, and that we can be praised by everyone. And understand the problem with it wasn't the building. The problem was self. They were doing it for self. They were doing, they was building something for glory so man could look at them for self. That is pride. The core of the Tower of Babel, the core of who was driving that was the enemy, the devil. Because if you know in the Bible, it says that the devil was casted down. So he's down here. Now he wants to get back up there. He always wanted to be God. So he uses man. Say, hey, you want to build it for yourself? But he was just building something for himself. And understand this. Anything that's self-driven will self-destruct. Anything that you do and you create in this world, and I can tell you from, from experience, you can build a tower and, and so people could be like, yeah, that's George. Yo, George got three dealers. Yo, yo, he got money, right? You can, you can do that, but when you're doing it for self, watch this. Something happens inside because before your life explodes, it implodes. Woo! In other words, you blow up inside. Like from the outside, you would have said, George got it like that. But if you would have asked me what's going on in my heart, I would have been like, I don't got it like that. Because I, I was building something, but not for the glory of God. I was, I was taking my gifts, right? I was taking my gifts, and I was using my gifts to build something 
for me, when the gifts were meant to build for others, to build for God. I was supposed to build for God, and I had it all wrong. I had it all wrong. I wish somebody would have said this message today to me when I first started. I would have saved a lot of years because nobody ever told me. Nobody ever told, nobody explained to me who God is in our life and what is God and who is church. I was the first one of the used to tell me, um, you want to go to church? I was like, I don't do that. I was so against the church. I would even say, oh, the church is hanging inside of my heart. Jesus is in my heart. With all that mess is in there and Jesus is in that mess. But yet inside I was imploding. Implode means it's an explosion, but it's inside. Inside I was destroyed. I, 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 was, I was beat. And so the thing on this story is that they came together, thousands of people, and this is what they wanted us to do. There was no arguments. There was not, I'm the boss, you're the boss. We, there was none of that. They were working in harmony. And they were working in harmony so much, you want to know how much? That it actually took, this is the first time we read this in the Bible besides Jesus coming, that God was in heaven and he had to come down and see for himself. What? Hold, 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 hold. I'll show you. This is God. He's sitting up there with the, with the Jesus, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They're, they're chilling up in heaven. They don't need to be coming down here. So I, this is me. Don't say, oh, the pastor said that it's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. I'm just, I'm just giving you my side of the story, what I think that happened up there. It's my story. It ain't, ain't Bible. It's, it's JC's story. And it's not Jesus Christ. It's George Caban. <laughs> he said JC said it. <laughs> no, George. <laughs> it ain't Jesus. So he creates man, and they go on, and they do the thing, and this is going on down there. He's like, oh, you, you guys do you. You know, he gave them authority. He gave them power. You, you go, you're little gods, right? He created mankind. He created you in the image of God. You are like God. You, you have the image and the likeness of God, whether you believe it or not. That's, that's who your daddy is. Who your daddy? God, God, who your daddy? God is your daddy, right? So they're up there, right? And I can imagine like a, an angel, like a bochinchoso angel. It's like, hey, this is my story. Don't judge me. So I could imagine the angel coming up there and be like, uh, God, um, remember those, the, the, your, your sons, uh, the ones you created down there? Um, they're coming up here. What? Up here? <laughs> yeah. They, they're, they're coming up here. He was like, how? He says, I don't know what happened. But they came together and something happened. They came together and somehow they started communicating and somehow they're coming up. If you sit there and wait for them, they're going to come up here. And God was like, hold on. Imagine, he couldn't listen to the angel. Again, if we look at the Bible, you know, you try to interpret it, but he could have just or seen it or went down there. But the Bible doesn't say that. This is the only part of the Bible you see this besides Jesus coming. It says, but the Lord came what? Down to look. Now, you know when someone tells you something, you're like, I, I got to see it with my. Why? Because you're so amazed at what they're saying that you don't want to take their word for it. You want to like, push them out the side and be like, I'm going to go there and watch myself. So that's what happened. Because I'm not going to listen to what you're saying because I don't. I know I made them like me, and I'm good, but I don't know that they were that good. So it says that he came down, right? Watch this. To the city. And the tower, the people were building. And he, look what he says. Because every little line in the Bible means something. When you see a look in the little line, I didn't put that. When you say that, it's, it's the explanation of, look! I'm just putting expression to the word. God is going, Look! The people are what? Mind you, God is in heaven. He comes off his throne, takes off his glory, and stands on dirt to see what he created with dirt and the power that was in the unity. And they're all looking at each other like, yo, this is crazy. My version. This is crazy. And they all what? Speak When it means this, uh, back, later on I'll tell you that, you know, they changed all the languages, but there was only one language. 
And not only that, it was one language, but they understood. You know that if I talk to you in, in Chinese, you won't understand what I'm trying to say, right? And so two people that can't understand can't build. If what I'm telling you, you're not understanding and you're not seeing, is as if my words are gibberish. Because I can't understand. So what he's talking about here is a language, is a, is a oneness, is a purpose. Like it was a big win. This is the big win. How are we going to do it? Everybody just get joined. And not everybody, everybody was not the boss. You know how everybody want to be the boss? Like you go to a store and everybody's the boss, but nobody's the boss. And then you tell somebody, you're not my boss. Because <laughs> it's something about boss. <laughs> right? And then when there's too many bosses, too many Indians, there's no, no chiefs. Or no, too many chiefs. One of those things. Too many chiefs, no Indian. There's all chiefs. It's not a tribe. It's a bunch of bosses, right? But this is the amazement. Watch this. I want you to follow me. The amazement was the fact that nobody was pompous on each other. Either All of them just came under each other. Each one said, oh, could you grab that chair? I am the pastor. I carry the anointing in the chair of God. I do not carry that chair. No, let's do it. Because they were all servants. They were all doing what needed to be done without title, without offense. Think, oh, I got to go in here. Sorry, I got to go in this little section. There was no offense. There was no one getting higher than other because they had something in common. Because you got to understand when offense, offense is when I say something to you and it does, you don't like it and you run away. Or you come at me because it wasn't what you wanted to hear. Right? And so that creates what? Division. And that's what's happening even in the body of Christ, even in the world. You see it all over the news and everything. There's offense. There's something I don't like about you. I don't like. But we watch this. I'm going to tell you this secret this morning. You are all created in the likeness and the image of God. And so when you don't like someone, is that saying, I don't like God because he is the image and the likeness of God. But the enemy is so good at this. I remember when I was like ninth grade. And I was in school, and I was in my lunch line, just minding my own business. I'm on line getting my lunch. And so there was a girl in front of me that had a nice body. So there was a couple of clowns way before me. And they went, up, they went around and grabbed her buttocks, and then they left. So the girl goes like this. Huh? Because, you know, that's the, the, yeah, you ever touch a girl the wrong way? They're like, hey! And all they saw was who? And that's how the enemy is. The enemy is used people and then gets out the way. And all you see is the person. And so now my anger is towards you. You, you did it. You, right? And so that creates division. And understand that when there's division, there's no unity. When there's no unity, there's, there's always going to be division. So he says the people are united and they all speak the same language. Look at this. Look at this statement. I want you to grab onto this because this, this has to do not only for the church, but it has to do with your household, with home, and the, you know, a divided house cannot stand. So this is a, this is a principle. If anything you get today, say, man, I, I need, we need to unite, you know, because it says this. After this, nothing they set out to do will be what? Whew, how many want an impossible house? How many want a, a household that whatever we say we're going to do, we put it on the wall and we go after it and nothing's stopping us? And that's the, the, the main purpose. The main purpose in the beginning, uh, it was that God wanted us to be in one mind and one language and whatever we build, because we got to understand this. You're building your house. Watch this. You're building your house. You're building your family. You're building your kids. You want to establish them on the truth of God. That's what church is for. But there's also another place that you come together and you become one. Because many people, including myself, I'm guilty of this. I always say, I don't need church. I don't need church. And yet, if we go to China, in China, they can't gather for Jesus, yet they gather somehow because they find importance to it. And my, matter of fact, if they got together and they got caught getting together for Jesus, they get killed. So is there some importance about gathering together? There is, a, there is power in the gathering together. If I know that if I'm going through something that I don't have one person, I got 100 people, to me the biggest, be, best feeling I get is when I come here on Sundays or Thursdays where I gather with people because that means that I'm not by myself. That means I'm not alone. That means even though I feel like alone, the truth is I'm not alone. The truth is that I'm part of something bigger than myself. All I know is I get up every morning and I got a big vision and that, big, that vision got to do with God. 
Do I have my personal vision? Everybody knows me. We did a fin matrix financial freedom yesterday. We were teaching on finances. Yes. And I'm building. But I make sure that what I'm building is for my generations to come. And out of what I'm building, I'm giving back to God. Because that's the big win. The big win is not my fortune. The big win is my father's fortune. Because I understand that when he calls us, what are you doing here? Well, if you ask yourself, what am I doing on earth? Oh, you know, you have your kids, you have your job. But is there a bigger picture? Have you ever thought of that? You ever get in the morning, you're like, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> or am I the only one? I, like, what, the, what, what am I doing on earth? Because if it was forever, we live forever. But we know that we don't live forever. We got 80 years to do whatever God calls us to do. And many times we do the things we want to do. We build a city for ourselves. We build us, right? Not to glorify God. And sometimes we don't know. But that's why I'm here today to tell you that there is a bigger picture. There's more to life than your own, your own tribe. You got your own tribe. Pastor Rose spoke last week. You got your own tribe. And then you got the tribe here. And this tribe here, we're coming together to do something great. We're, we're doing something so people could get to heaven. We're not building a tower. We're building a bridge. We're building a bridge. Every time you hear the word of God. When we come together and someone repents and says, man, I've been living wrong. I need some Jesus in my life. I've been doing everything wrong. Let me find out what Jesus got to do in my life because I can't do it. That right there is the purpose why we gather on Sundays. When we gather on Thursdays, when we gather for studies, we're doing something because not only we want to establish it for the next life, but we also want to build for God. I want, to, I want to be like this, that when my eyes open, watch this, and everybody's eyes are going to open before Jesus. That I open my eyes before Jesus that I completed what he called me to do. That's the biggest success, uh, Pastor. Tell me what success is. Success is doing what God called you to do and finishing it. That's it. Like I, could, I could leave buildings, and we're, and we're, we're, in, we're in the middle of, uh, of building a 64-unit senior citizen home, and I'm sure that's not the, the end of it. And my accolades there in heaven, I can't take my building. None of that. None of that. None of that goes with me. The only thing that goes with me is whatever I have stored up my treasures in heaven. And that's when I do for others. It's not about me. It's when I surrender myself here on Sunday. I'm surrendering myself to come and bring you a word so that you can hear by faith. It comes from hearing. And something happens inside and starts shifting. And all of a sudden you was going this way. And now you're redirected the way that God wants you. And then you start seeing everything just flow. Everybody say flow. flow. It's only when you get with God that things flow. And then I... And I First, first hand experience, I had it, lost it, had it, lost it. And my greatest asset that I have, I even told my son, is the fact that we're here of service. Because there's something in the power of unity. So he goes, this is God still talking. He says, come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. They won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. And so here is confusion. Everybody say confusion. Confusion is not from God. Confusion is from the enemy because understand that when this happened, you know who was there? The devil. And the devil said, oh, you're going to stop my project. Oh, that's how you're going to do me. Because the devil wanted to go back to heaven because he always thought he was God. He's had an identity problem and he still got an identity problem. That's why he operates through people, so you will know who you are. And if you get an identity problem, that's the characteristics of him. He had an identity problem. He wasn't God, but he wanted to be God. And still the same today. But confusion is where God uses, because confused people do what? Nothing. That's my motto, JC. Confused people do nothing. If you're looking at something and you can't figure it out, what happens? You're confused, you do what? Me voy de aquí. Yo no entiendo esto. You leave, right? So confusion comes from the enemy. And so the body of Christ, the, 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 the assembly of God comes together. And the number one thing the enemy does is bring division. Division is how he operates. Division is him, his MO. Division. And the thing is that he's not going to come with, uh, you know, a stork. And he, he uses people through hurt. Oh. Hurt people hurt people. And so if someone is hurt and they're, they're saying something that is negative or they're coming against you, it's the hurt in them. It's the enemy operating through them. But when you are a child, someone's got to tell you, hey, don't do that. Don't hate people. But when you're a son of God and you understand these principles, you go, it's not what's her, it's what's in her, right? It's the operation of the enemy because his job is to watch this. His job is to get you in. Come in. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, they said that about you. 
And you're like, yeah. And you ever heard it like in, in your own conversations, in your own mind? It's just a, accusations. Who do they think they are? Who you, you ever heard that? I'm sure that I'm not the only crazy one. You're like, who do you think they are? Fuck, you don't know who I am. And they come with the whole, the whole head thing. You don't know who I am. You don't know the bobblehead. <laughs> you don't know who I am. Right? And so when you're hurt and someone says something offensive, you're going to lash out at them. And what happens is if you receive the lashing, watch this. Now you are hurt and now you're going to hurt others. And whenever there's hurt and offense, there's never unity. You'll never see the power of God operate through you because it comes in unity. Sometimes you got to overlook offense. That's why God says, you love me. I'll tell you why you love me because I loved you first. And now go love one another. He said, go love one another. Because at the end of the day, offense will stop us from doing anything. The first thing he wants to do is, here we're building for God. He's going to operate in the church. He operates more in the church than anybody else. Because if he can build an offense between you and someone here and you don't come, there goes the, there goes the leg. I always say, <laughs> we're going to read it now. The body, the, the body of God is, is, is many parts. And so if you're a finger and you don't go to church, this is you. <laughs> you're just a finger. You, it's of no use until you get a hand. It's of no use until it connects to the elbow. It's of no use until it connects to the arm. It's no use until it connects to the body. We are all, everyone in here is gifted in something. You're at one piece. And it's great. You're a finger. <laughs> Hopefully it's the index, right? <laughs> but it, it, unless it comes together for the big purpose. I, I want to talk about the big picture because we, we could use these practical uh, teachings for the household. But look what he says in 1 Corinthians. This is Paul. He says, now the body is not, not, not. Made up of what? One part. But of many. If the foot <laughs> should say, because I'm not the hand, I don't belong to the body, it will not, for the reason, cease to be part of the body. Just because you say you're not part of the party of the body doesn't mean that you're not part of the body. In other words, he's saying, just because you say, well, I'm not part of the body, I don't need to go to church, I don't need, because he's talking about the church. He's talking about the coming together. He says, you're still part of the body. But what are you going to accomplish apart from the body? Then he goes and says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. <laughs> right? The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need. They both are needed. They're both different things. They're both different gifts. They're, they, do, they do different functions. But it comes together like the transformer and becomes this big one thing. Woo! So when we come here together and you see people, whether they're doing video or they're, they're greeting in the front, they're all fingers and toes and elbows, and, and then we're coming all together for this big thing so that we can feel the glory of God. Because the, let me tell you this, the glory of God is different here than it is at home. There is an individual anointing, and I gave a high five because I do it at home, but I be feeding for my Sundays, and I'm serving because it's something that happens. Tell your neighbor, something happens. When you show up, when you show up, something happens. Even you yourself inside, when we're in worship, there's something that happens because the glory of God rests on the people worshiping. Does he, does he rest in my house? Yes, he does. Is it different? Yes, it is. Imagine the Chinese people will rather die than not get together. I want you to, I want you to think on that. They'll rather die gathering than not gather at all because they're dead. And so they find life in the gathering, right? And so the, the, head, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Why? It's all part of it. It's all part of it. It's all one body. It's all one purpose. You got a purpose. You got a calling. You got a house. You're the head of the house. If you're the husband, the wife, you're there to help the husband, right? There's that one vision, but then there's a, a bigger vision that I need you just like... I need you, you need me, because you know what? You have something that I don't have. In other words, and when you don't bring it here, then how do I have it? We're all like a bunch of parts, and we come together in this oneness, right? We're better together. We're better together. And so then he continues in 1 Corinthians. He says, you are the body, the anointed one, and each of you is unique. Oh, you know, each one of you sitting here today, you're unique. You know that God is, oh, I don't have anything. You got something. 
you got something. It's probably deep inside, but it's, it's something that God has given you that is for the body, not only for the body, but it's going to also help you because when you, when, you for, when you fall into the flow of God, everything connects. It seems that whenever your household, if, you, if you've ever been visiting church and been part of the church and you come to church, it's, there's a different environment that happens in your house. There's a different aura. There's a different flow. If you're part of church, there's a different thing that happens when you come together. And he says, and the vital part of it. You know what vital means? That's, that's important. You are vital. You're not only unique. I want you to understand this. You're like, I don't have anything. You got something. Because I had something and I used it for the wrong side. Now I use it for here. I was a public speaker when I was on, on that side. And it wasn't for that. The enemy took that and went to that. And, and, and I started building. For, I was building for myself. I said, yo, something wrong here. I'm not in the flow. Everybody say flow. I wasn't in God's flow. It was, I was imploding. I was blowing up inside. Everything was coming apart. You know what it is to go to sleep with nine sleeping pills just to go to sleep? And tears are coming down your eyes because you can't sleep? Implode. Now, mind you, I had money. I had, you name it, I had it. But I didn't have the flow. I didn't have the becoming one, right? It was just me. I was my own God. I was my own tower. I was my own Babel. And I was the one. And I, I had 35 employees. And I tell them what to do. It's my kingdom. But that kingdom didn't last long. You know why? Because nothing that I built ever fulfilled me like the fulfillment of doing what God's called me to do. Nothing will ever fulfill you. Success, success without fulfillment is failure. Ooh, you can write that down. Success without fulfillment is failure. And you'll never find fulfillment in things outside of this. The fulfillment falls when you are part of the body of Christ and you are one. There's something that happens. There's an anointing. There's a glory that happens when you connect with the body. God has placed in the church. Oh, there goes the word. Hold on. The, the word is connected with church and it's connected to his body. It's connected. This is the body of Christ. I'm a finger. You're a finger. You're an elbow. When we come together, it's the glory of God. He said, God has placed the church the following. He put apostles, which are teachers, prophets, uh, third teachers, those with gifts of miracles, gifts of... Some of you got gifts of healing and miracles and never laid hand on someone, but God has given you the gift. You are vital. Here, I'm telling you this morning. You are vital. I have no importance. You are important. God designed you. You are still breathing. You're still here. You have importance. You are vital. You are needed. I need you. How's that? You, there's gifts inside here that we haven't even tapped. All to bring glory to the Father. All to make a, a bridge to heaven. He says, gifts of, of, of healing, gifts of revelation, knowledge, gift of leadership. Come on, there's some leaders in here. If you're a boss in your job, you're a leader. Perhaps, watch this, perhaps that leadership you've been using it on the wrong side. Not that it's not good. It's what God gave you as a gift. And you're really good at your job. But what if you just kind of gave it back to God? And say, hey God, I'm a leader. How could I help this? How could I bring my skills here? How could I make this bridge to heaven greater? How could I be part of what you call me to do? How could I connect with you? How could I flow with you? How? Gifts of different kinds of tongues. These are gifts. We're vital. This is the church. And so understanding this, I understand. Hold on. When I come here, I get something that I don't get nowhere else. And I was a clubber. I used to go to Copacabana dancing. Hey, remember I was talking about the guy with the foot? When I first start, started coming to God, that was me. Because I wanted God, but my foot wanted salsa. <laughs> I was like this. I used to go to church like this. I was like, Lord, cut it off. <laughs> but if I cut it off, how can I get to church? So I needed my leg. And, and little by little, started going down it started communicating and now I could hear anything and my leg is connected to the body my mind is controlling my leg we're going to worship God my leg don't go the other way we're going to worship God my leg go with me we worship God because we are what becoming one takes what me and you we connect. We all have histories. We have stories. We have things that we've gone through. But you know that your story and your testimony, what God's taking you out of, could help somebody else. Did you know that? Do you know that is vital? Your story is vital. Your story is a gift. But it doesn't work for you. God made you go through there and came and he pulled you out 
so that now you can turn around and do one thing, help another. It's real simple. I think we overcomplicate church. We overcomplicate being a follower of Christ. It's not about what you're wearing. I mean, I even got holes in my jeans. It's not about my appearance, but it's what's in my heart. It's what I stand for. It's what I do. It's what I lead others to do. It's that I lay down my life because Jesus Christ laid down his life for me. I laid down my life so that others could cross the bridge. If I have to get in the way between two places and you got to walk over me, I'll be the map. But I know that I'm fulfilled by you walking over me. And I'm not saying in a bad way. I'm saying it in a sense of just a bridge. I'm a bridge. You're a bridge. Your story, someone out there needs your story. Faith comes from what? People need to hear where God took you out of. And so I'm going to finish with this last verse. Everybody can stand up. This doesn't make any sense. I'm a, <laughs> I was reading this over and over, and it didn't make any sense. Deuteronomy 32.30, Bible scholar. Watch this. How could one man chase a thousand... Or two, put 10,000 flight unless the rock has been sold to them, unless the Lord gives them. So here he's saying one person could fight a thousand. So one could fight a thousand. But he says two, now I, I love math. I love math. I, I'm in the car business, I love math. So if one does 1,000, two will do what? 2,000. Look at God's addition. He says two will put 10,000. In other words, when me and you get together, we don't fight 2,000, we fight 10,000. Why? It's a mystery in the Word of God that when we come together in one mind and language, God does something. When we lay down our life, when we say, God, here, take my life, do whatever you want. Because I know what it is to implode. I know what it is to go through anxiety. I know what it is to go through depression. I know what it is to have it all and not have it all. I know what it is to be in a room full of people and feel empty. I know! It's just that we didn't have to flow of God. And so I don't know if this is you this morning. And say, hold on, man. That's me. And I'm, in, I'm blowing up inside. My life is in shambles because everything, especially with this COVID, is just a mess. I'm going to do a prayer so you can accept Jesus into your heart as we go into this worship song. You just follow me with a simple prayer. going to go into the song spirit break out you know the spirit broke out in the day of pentecost you know what they were the bible says that they were in one mind and one language one mind and one language and god came and wrecked the place and i pray that this morning he wrecks this place in a good way so follow me with this prayer father i believe you sent your son to die for me this morning i give up i surrender i open my heart Come into my life. Lead me, guide me. Teach me. And show me where you want me to connect. Show me what part I am in your body. Show me what you want to do with my life. Show me. In Jesus' name.
yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful word today. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We want to thank everyone on Facebook for watching, for watching online. Uh, we want to end up with a prayer, Father. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you because we are better together, Father God. We ask that you watch over us this week, Father God. Put your healing hand over us, Father. Keep us safe, Lord. We love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless you all. So glad you joined us this morning. If you've been impacted by this message this morning and you're ready to take your relationship with God to another level so that he can lead you, guide you, and empower you in this walk of faith, I want you to join me in this prayer. You ready? Let's go. Father, I believe you sent your son to die for me. And on the third day, he resurrected. And today he is seated with you in heavenly places. Today I surrender. Today I leave it all at your feet. Come into my life and be all that I need in Jesus' name. If you did that prayer, I want to say this. You ready? Welcome home. Welcome home. The next steps is connect with community. Come on Sunday. Join us on Sunday. Register and come on a Sunday. We got virtual I groups coming soon. It'll be small groups right from your home that you can communicate. And we also have our Thursday worship. So connect with us. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching our service. If you felt encouraged, built up, and edified, we want you to share this page, share the service. We also want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also, you can follow us on Instagram. You can also follow us on Facebook. Send it out to your friends, family, auntie, uncle, everyone. And if you missed any of our services, you can also check us out on YouTube and you can catch up to all the video playlists and you can see all the recent messages. And we also want to say thank you for your faithful giving. Because of your giving, we're allowed to do the things that we do here. And you're able to see us live, even on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. So keep giving, and we thank you for everything you're doing. Be blessed. We love y'all. God bless y'all.